So, Ger, it's now international break. Everyone hates international break. Leeds United doing all right, sitting third uh, in, in the championship. You know, Daniel Farker at the helm, at the wheel. But that's not what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the masterclass of Marcelo Bielsa at Leeds United. I know a lot of you be thinking, why are you talking about him? He's not our manager anymore. It's nice to reminisce, okay, ladies and gentlemen. And I want to uh, start with you, Ger, and just say, what's your mm. first memory of Marcelo Bielsa at Leeds where you thought, yeah, this man is is different from any other manager we've had in a long time. Um, I think the first game was when we kind of all went, wow, this is the same group of players pretty much. And we had Mateus Click come back, who'd been farmed out to Utrecht. And we were thinking, it's the end of him. He's probably not that good. And then he has an incredible game because Adam Forshaw gets injured in preseason. And all of a sudden, Clicky gets his opportunity and the rest is history with Clicky. And I was saying this just to you just before we went live with this. Um, I had been taking a ton of screenshots of like motivational quotes from coaches over when I was doing my coaching badges, just anything, any kind of like main, like top quality coaches kind of stuff. But I'd load a lot of random co quotes as well. And then when Bielsa came in, I only started to realize that I think 90% of the quotes that I had screenshots from Marcelo Bielsa co quotes from when he was at Marseille or when he was doing the international stuff with Chile. And I loved him. I, lo I loved, I loved his his thought process on football like i thought these are quotes that i could screenshot get printed off stick them up in the dressing room these are you know things that players will look at for the great on a pitch and so you can imagine what that's like for a group of professional players when a play when a manager like that comes in with the the aura that bielsa came in with and as you said there'd be a lot of people watching this going sick of talking about bielsa why are we still talking about bielsa and there's a guy on twitter this week complaining about people uh talking about what he's doing to Uruguay and threatening to block people. And I think my response to him was, I'll happily take the block. <laughs> Put a smile on my face. I would, I haven't got a chance to talk about Marcel Bielsa really much. So um, that game, the game against Stoke, I think caught everyone off guard. Mm -hmm. It definitely caught me off guard. I think we looked at how we played, the speed that we played at. You know, you had Dallas and Ailing bombing, bombing up and down the pitch. And it was just, it was a joy to watch. And then you thought, maybe it's only one game. And then mm -hmm. the following game, we we do it again. You're like, okay, all right, mm -hmm. this is a hang on. This isn't happening to Leeds fans. Where <laughs> beautiful football, attacking football, scoring loads of goals, winning games. This isn't Leeds, is it? This hasn't happened to us in a long time. So I think we're all kind of a little bit in shock initially, and then just pure delight for the rest of it. And there were ups and downs in the first season. It wasn't all plain sailing for him in the first season, but it was the start of something that was gonna to gonna solidify him as a legend in the club and and give us another manager like Don Revy and like Harry Wilkins and that you talk about years after or David O'Leary for the, the guys that grew up during the um the Champions League era. Yeah. But um I don't know why we shouldn't talk about Marcelo Bielsa because we still talk about Don Revy. Mm. We still talk about Harry Wilkinson. These are managers that made an impact and you should talk about them because they remind you of better times at your club. Now Frack is doing a fantastic job at Leeds and we're doing great. That's yeah. great. We just come off the back of a couple of really bad years and it's nice to talk about things that make you happy again. So yeah, he's a fantastic manager, a very good coach. You can see the impact he's having at Uruguay now as well. So, mm. yeah. Brilliant. I can't not talk about Marcelo Bielsa and not have a smile on my face. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. He was he was he was absolutely fantastic. Like he's, he's a bit of just he was a difference at Leeds United and, and I completely agree when you say why can't we talk about ex-managers? Man United fans still talk about Sir Alex Ferguson that the good times for them. Why can't we talk about it the good times for us and like Jez touched on, we're not saying what's happening now is awful. Obviously, mm -hmm. we're in a really good position. Daniel Farker's absolutely brilliant. And this is not me comparing Daniel Farker to Marcelo Bielsa. It's just a, a nice little bit of, uh, you know, memories of, of Marcelo Bielsa. Joe, we'll touch back to that first season. Obviously, Leeds, you know, failed in the playoffs against Derby. Mm -hmm. Just how tough was that game for you? I was working in London at the time. So I, 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 the company I work for, I, I, for a three-year period, I was working with the UK side of the business. So I was flying over to Reading every single week for about three years. And um, but there was a small pub there. And I went in to watch it. I think we had a three-goal lead or something going into that game. It was two-goal lead. We basically yeah. were not going to throw this away. This is no. this is probably done and dusted. Um, and then we leads it, didn't we? We absolutely mm -hmm. leads it. We did the most lead United thing we could possibly do. We conceded uh, our lead at home. In our own stadium, when it should have mm -hmm. just been a cakewalk against the Derby County team that at that point looked like they'd run out of steam. And um, it was horrible to watch. I was mm -hmm. so angry that I like I was in a pub where I knew nobody, and I'm Irish, and I'm I'm standing in a small little pub in, in the middle of nowhere in England in Reading, losing it at a television screen. There's like seven people in the pub, and I'm standing up at the back of the room going, What are you doing? <laughs> you know, um, and then there's Cooper and Cassia smash into each other, and you're just and of course, Mike, you get 
you get two sides on this. You get mm. a, a side of people who are like, that's oh, Cassia's fault. 100% Cassia's fault. Yeah. And then you'd ever else, then you'd other people which decide I was always going, oh, it's Cooper's fault. Cassia's mm. running towards the ball. He can see the pitch in front of him. Cooper can't see what's behind him. Get out of the way. And they crack, they crack into each other and it's, it's a tap in, you know. And it was just, that was the game you wanted to see him really get one over on on. Lampard, mm. like you, you really wanted to see that because of the whole Spygate stuff. You know, you really yeah. want to see that that be done. But um, they had their moments. They celebrated a semi final win, like it was they they'd been promoted to the Premier <laughs> League, and then now now look at where they are now. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it was a tough pill to swallow, but you kind of expected it with Leeds at, for a long time. You kind of just thought we'll do well to a certain degree, and then at some point we'll make a ball to this because it's mm. us. Someone will make a stupid mistake, or you'll hear the commentator say, oh, here's Dave, hasn't scored in six years. <laughs> he's scoring in five seconds, isn't he? Yeah. And Dave would go ahead and score. So there's always stuff like that. Jess, my partner, hates it. We're sitting down, and the commentator will say, oh, here comes young Matt Murphy. No senior goals in his entire <laughs> career. And she even say, hey, he scores. I was like, yeah, of course yeah. he's got to score. Of course no, he's it's, score. So, it is exactly that. Um, I remember yeah. that game was was horrible. I remember watching it with my dad, and you know, just hit, I can still hear the commentary. You know, it was like it's Marriott once more. He's done it, and I'm like, I remember me and my dad didn't speak for about 45 minutes after the game. We just sat there, and it it was horrible, but not really in Leeds style fashion. The next season, we thought maybe, oh, you know, I don't know what's going to happen with that. Was a big, you know, big loss in that playoff semi final. Can Leeds United go do it again? And, you know, well, we started off pretty strongly at Bristol. And in the end, I mean, minus COVID and everything, we done all right the, the, the next season, didn't we? Only got promoted because of COVID, let's be honest. Let's just say that, <laughs> you know? Let's just say it out loud. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the worry was always a hangover. You know, you got so close. You were top of the league for so long in the previous season. It was there. We threw it away. We fell down into the playoffs. I mean, once we go into the playoffs, we knew. You know, with leads in the players, and even if you get to Wembley, our record on Wembley's awful. Mm. So you're here going, can we play games anywhere else? And then maybe we've got a <laughs> chance, but not Wembley, please. Um, and the worry was that that would carry into the start of next season. That you go into the next next campaign, it just wouldn't be the same. Our teams would figure us out, and we came out of the, the blocks against Bristol City like a brand new team with f- even fitter than they had been the previous year, which was hard to take in. And um, until you watch Take Me Home, and you realize the pressure that was on those players to come back within a certain body fat percentage and, and mm-hmm. the, the, the data. And was Calvin Phillips was dreading going in for his measurements because he was like, I'm going to be doing laps all week. I'm going to be doing laps all week. <laughs> so, you know, they came into this in the best condition they could. Pablo does what Pablo did, you know, and and, and just one strike puts the previous season behind us in, in, one, in one go. And we're like, right, we're back. We're fine. Yeah. We're good. We're good. We're going to do this. And that was a phenomenal season. That was just a phenomenal yeah. season. I, I, it became a thing where when we scored, I came off my couch and would, I used to have a little uh, coffee table in the middle of my sitting room, my living room. And when we'd score a goal, I'd end, up, I'd end up running around the coffee table. I'd end up off my feet <laughs> and then the far side of the room. So um, that became a, a, like a, a weekend tradition. It was like, when that happens, I'm gone. Like, I'm just, I'm up and I'm running. So I um, hadn't done that with any yeah. other manager at Leeds. Hadn't experienced that, those kind of highs that we'd had. And even though we were in the championship, it was still... I think the lads in square ball say it all the time. Like sometimes the destination isn't as good as the journey. And the journey was a hell of a journey. And then that second season was yeah. some of the football. I, I got a, I couldn't get tickets to see them because it was very hard to get into Ellen road. Same, yeah. But I did at the end of the season, I got one game to see, see CBLC in, in Ellen road. And that was again, again, that, that Pablo scored and in the whole stadium. Just, I've never, I've never heard anything like Ellen road like that before because the football was magic. You know, mm-hmm. we saw pa- Pablo at his absolute best yeah. best absolute best um yeah loved it loved every bit of it that season and then the next season obviously we we finished ninth in the premier league a very very good season in the premier league um i mean i'm not gonna touch too much on that but give me one game that was like easy yeah, i know easy. which one it is i know which one it is go on. aston villa away because my brother's an aston villa fan and we oh. absolutely tongued him and he hates pat bamford and he scored a hat trick so it was oh, okay. absolutely I was gonna say City, Stuart no. Dallas. No, oh, fair no. enough. That Get Villa game was good though. Villa. Yeah, that Villa game yeah. was very good. Patrick Bamford turned into—I don't even know who he turned <sighs> into that game. He was that third goal where he like kind of shimmies it and puts it I top just corner. Him. Honk. Yeah, it's... it's like I didn't even know what I was watching. But obviously, a fantastic season. Finished ninth. Next season, I mean, things start—you know—going wrong for Marcelo Bielsa, and um, it was one of them where. 
I was seeing Twitter and then everyone was like, get him out. He's ruining our club. And I didn't want that to be, you know, I think Leeds fans, football fans in general, very reactionary. And I'm not saying if we kept Marcelo Bielsa, we would have stayed up. I wasn't part of that. I did come to a point where I was like, I think it's best for him to leave. I did. I was one of them. But, you know, when we look who we replaced him with, obviously, I maybe would have <laughs> would have changed my mind. But I didn't want the legacy of him to be ruined by a few bad results at the end of his you know, tenure at Leeds United. And when he did leave, what was your initial thoughts? Were you thinking, what are the club doing? Or were you thinking, that's probably about, you know, good time to change now? I think I put a picture up of him um, on my Instagram account. And I think the heading I put on it was, you deserved better than this. Okay. Um, I didn't like how the club went about it. I thought it was cheap. I thought he deserved far more respect than they showed him when they got rid of him. Um, I didn't want him to go. I thought we were heading down anyway, and I would much rather have gone down with him mm -hmm. um, because I think he would have got us straight back up. And, and I think hindsight's a great thing to be able to look back now with all the information that we have now. And we know that he had asked for players and the club had told us that he didn't want players. It's like, no, no, he didn't want your players that you were giving him. He wanted a different caliber player. Then he had the report saying, oh, well, that's 40 million. He wanted like lots of 40 million pound players. Like, fine, get him one. Make one position better than it already is. Give him something. Give him a number nine. Give him a left back. Give him one of the two things he needs. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't supported correctly at all. And that's been said by a lot of clubs, but lots of good managers. Like when you get a manager of that caliber in here, you've got, this is your shot. This is your chance. Give them what they need to be the most successful they can be. Otherwise, you're wasting that opportunity. Like, look at what he's doing at Uruguay now. And he did that at Leeds. Players were broken, but he told them they would break. I mean, nothing that happened should have been a surprise. Everything that happened was said by, he had said would happen. And it, and it did happen. This this system has a three-year lifespan on it. They either change the manager or you change the players. Club made a decision to change the manager. And that was an awful decision when it came down to it because... People say Jesse Marsh kept us. I, I was, and I was, I was, I think I, I'm probably one of the few people that was very fair with Jesse. I think I gave Jesse an awful lot more Same. Um, space to be, to be successful or give him room to, to go into this job than I probably should have. And looking back, yeah, like I, I should have been annoyed from the first game to see him. I was like, no, oh, give him a chance, give him a chance. Let's see how it goes. My take was always, I'll always back the manager because I want the team to be successful. And if the team is successful, then he's successful and it works together. Mm -hmm. So when he did go, I just thought, it wasn't the right time. Um, it shouldn't have been done like that on the fly after a game. Like, it, And also the press shouldn't have found out before he did. Whatever happened that season, however bad it went, we had a lot of injuries that year. Um, he deserved a better send-off as the Mateus Click, as in other players that didn't get the send-off they should have gotten for what they did for that club. I want the man to remember for what he should be remembered for. Beautiful football, uh, putting a group of absolute pros together on and off the pitch and for leveling them out as well to show them that people are saving money and are working their asses off every single week to come and, come and watch this team, watch you play. You're going to now experience that, getting them out cleaning with, with pitchforks and bags, picking up rubbish and, you know, everything he did there was just, it was all the right thing to do. He would have been a dream man to bring upstairs into Leeds and be the guy that created the next step for Leeds as a director of football. It, it should have happened. So a very long-winded answer, Ollie, but, um, I haven't talked about it in two years, so I kind of wanted to get off my chest. He deserved a hell of a lot better than he got because he's done a huge amount for Leeds.